Hello everyone, Sir Webs here and welcome back to Educ Nation. DepEd recently released DepEd Order Number 31, Series of 2020, also known as the Interim Guidelines for Assessment and Grading in Light of the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan, last October 2, 2020. The said DepEd Order includes the new grading system, which will be used for school year 2020-2021. And of course, with this new grading system, we present to you the only free fully automated electronic class record equipped with different templates that you can use in your tasks in this pandemic. But first things first, let's look at the changes in our grading system. Page 4 of this debit order, item number 16, discusses why we deliver assessments. The grading system shall also focus on two key areas, reading works and performance tasks. Originally, we have quarterly assessments as the third component of our grading system, but in this case, our department has taken this one out. Following that, items 19 and 20 shows the importance of conducting assessment remotely and the basic principles needed to do this effectively. We should also notice that assessment during this school year will also have a huge participation of our parents and guardians. Part C, item number 22, reminds us that the results of summative assessments must be tracked and learners who are falling behind the fifth week of the quarter must be given remediations. Now, let's get to the weight distribution of summative assessment components per learning area for grades 1 to 10. As we can see, language learning areas such as English, Filipino, and mother tongue based instruction will have 40% written works and 60% performance tasks. Science and Mathematics will have 50% for both written works and performance tasks. And MAPE, along with EPP or TLE, will have 30% reading works and 70% performance tasks since most of its components are measured on actual performance. Other than that, most of the provisions under Debit Order Number 8 Series of 2015 are still in effect until these guidelines are suspended for the upcoming school year. So now, let us show you the ISF automated e-class record for the new normal. We have two files for you, but you will only be using one file, depending on what your task is, if you're an advisor or an academic teacher. But in most cases, especially in the higher grade levels, advisors will also be handling academic subjects at the same time. So, you'd most likely use two files. Well, that's far better than handling multiple files every year. So let's start with our advisors. Download the file from the link below. Open the file for the first time and be sure to enable the settings as prompted. What you see now is the profile directory. Here, you can see the primary data, the learners' names for male and female, which can also accommodate 100 learners for each gender, thereby fixing the problem with secondary schools having large class sizes. And over here on the right, you can see the files that are available in this template. The first part are the learning areas, followed by the summary sheets per subject, per quarterly report, and the final grading sheet that already has a ranking of honors by the end of the school year. We also have a School Form 9 template designed from DepEd Order Number 8, Series of 2015. School Form 8, which if in any case you will be needing, and the School Forms 1, 3, and 5. The MySF1 template, which I will be showing later on, in order to generate the School Forms here. And of course, in case you'd like to contact me, you can just click this link here in the instructional video. So let's start encoding the primary data. As per Deped Order Number 30 Series of 2020, the amended school calendar indicates that the beginning of the school year will begin on September 21, 2020. So that's what we encoded here. And of course, the end of the school year will be on June 11, 2021. 
The learner's names here for male and female can be copy-pasted from your SF1. But if you have a list on your ELESF which is already final, you can also use that here. Now let's look at our learning areas. As you can see, since I will be handling grade 6, the mother tongue learning area is unavailable. But if you change this to grade 1, the science and EPPTLE learning area will be unavailable. Let's return it to grade 6 again. Now let's click on the Filipino learning area. Notice that on the upper part, we have navigation buttons which will make your recording a lot easier than before. Instead of having multiple files and worksheets per learning area, you can now just click the navigation for each quarter. On the leftmost part, we have two more buttons which will let you hide the unused rows in your file. The other button will do the opposite of what the previous button did. So basically, you can just hide and unhide the unused rows in your class record. So let's start putting some data on our template. I already encoded some scores here in our template and let's see what are some of its features. If you actually remove any of our highest possible scores, it will automatically indicate a red mark on that particular column, indicating you encoded incorrectly. And since we only have 23 male learners and 15 female learners, we have a lot of empty rows in our class record. This is where our buttons are very useful. By clicking the hide blank rows, all the empty rows in our template will automatically be hidden and the male and female listings will be connected as one single file. This will minimize multiple printing of empty sheets as well if you've been needing a hard copy of your e-class record. And of course, if you want to see the blank rows again, you can do that by clicking on the Show Blank Rows button. If you want to go back to the profile directory, you can just click the upper right section of the template. Now you're back at the profile directory, and you can now start encoding for the other learning areas of your advisory class. I already pre-encoded some data here in the other learning areas too, so that you don't have to wait. So, we'll click on the English learning area, and as you can see, all of the features of each learning area are the same with one another. Let's go back to our profile directory. Now let's move to the summary grading sheets. Let's start with the quarterly grading sheet per subject. Since the grades of each learning area are already available, this template will automatically give you all the grades of each learning area per quarter. And by clicking the subject cell here, a drop-down list will be available and by clicking the inverted triangle, you can choose the learning area you'd wish to print. For example, you choose math. The template will automatically change the learning area per quarter and the grades of your learners. The hide and show black rows button are also available which will immediately merge the male and female list into one single report. Next is the summary of quarterly grades which is also the learning areas under one report per quarter. Just like in the previous sheet, the show and hide rows buttons are available in the navigation tools and you can just click on each quarter and print the reports as you so desire. And of course, the final grading sheet, which is your final report for the end of the school year. All learning areas are available here, and if there are any blank learning areas, it's the learning area that is not available for that grade level, like mother tongue since it's only up to grade 3. On the rightmost part of the file, you can see the ranking column. This will automatically tell you if the learner is an awardee for an academic achievement for this school year. No need to classify what award he or she has since the template will automatically identify it for you. We also have the School Form 9, also known as the Report Cards. One file for the boys and one for the girls. Just choose which learner you are going to print and the template will automatically show you the profile of that learner and their grades. This portion will be the first side of the paper, and this portion will be the opposite side, 
you can just fold the paper just like how it was designed in Deped Order Number 8 Series of 2015. Now you can easily print the SF9 per quarter, no hassle whatsoever. And we also have the School Form 8, also known as the Nutritional Status Report. I don't know if you're going to be using this report, but if you are going to need it, you can just encode the birthdays here along with their weight and height and it will automatically give you all the details of that learner. This is also available for pre and post test. All the blackened areas are the cells that you don't have to encode anything. Once you start encoding, it will automatically be removed. And of course, the LIS school forms. Let's start here from the bottom, the My SF1 template. Basically, this is just the SF1 you downloaded from the LIS. You copy and paste it here in the sheet. When you download our file, the MySF1 template would be empty. So you just have to paste your SF1 from the LIS and place it here. The reason we wanted you to copy and paste it is to maintain the report's integrity, reliability, and credibility. And since you have data from the LIS SF1 already, the data from this source will be used to generate all other data that is found in your SF9, such as LRN, age, and gender, among others. So when you click this school form 1 here, it is merely a copy of the SF1 you downloaded from the LIS that you pasted in the My SF1 template. You can see the school form 2 is already here, but we haven't released that one yet. So watch out for that too. The school form 3, which automatically generates the learning areas that are offered per grade level. Basically, the titles of these learning areas change depending on the grade level you indicated in the profile directory. Also, with this template, you can just copy and paste the dates of the date you issued to all other cells. No need to write it manually. And lastly, the school form 5. Well, you really don't need this, but I just included it here if in any case that the LIS would have again some issues in generating of the school form 5, just like what happened a couple of years ago. So that's the advisor's e-class record for the new normal. I suggest all the advisors who are watching right now to stick to watching the subject teacher's ECR since I know most of our advisors are also academic teachers in the higher grade levels. After downloading the non-advisor e-class record for the new normal, the same pop-up notifications will prompt when you open it. Be sure to click the enable buttons of these pop-ups. Once all the notifications are enabled, you will only see two sheets. Don't worry, this will surprise you for sure. Let's start by filling in all the data necessary here. Now that we're done with that, let's click on the next sheet that is available. We can see that all the data profile needed in the header are already available. But since this is Educacion sa Pagpapakatao, we'll choose another learning area, one that is most likely an academic subject that is across all sections in the grade level under one teacher. How about Araling Panlipunan? So let's click on the learning area. Again, a drop-down list is available. Let's click on the inverted triangle and choose Araling Panlipunan. Notice that by choosing Araling Panlipunan, the sheet name also changed automatically, so you don't have to worry about renaming this sheet too. Now let's put some names and grades here in our template. So I already finished encoding some fictitious names and grades here, in our ECR. And just like with the advisor ECR a while ago, once you remove a score in the highest possible score, it will automatically indicate a red mark in your column. And if you try to encode a score in a cell that doesn't have a highest possible score, a pop-up error will immediately prompt you. Again, the hide and unhide use rows are still available here to merge the male and female sheets. 
along with all the quarterly navigations. And the summary sheet, which is formatted horizontally, and this is because the ECR is printed on a landscape format. And in order for you to print the summary sheets easily, we designed the summary sheet to have the same orientation. And last but not the least, the most powerful button in this template, the Create New Subject button. Basically, when we click this, it will automatically copy this sheet into a new one. And for example, these students are still under you on another subject. Let's say science. Then you can just easily change the learning area here and choose science. The sheet will automatically be renamed and all you have to do is to delete all of their scores. Now you have the Araling Panlipunan sheet and the science grading sheet in just one file. This is especially helpful to MAPE teachers. Instead of having four learning areas, music, arts, PE and health, and four quarters, which would mean you will be having 16 files in just one school year, now you will only have one. So even if you have multiple MAPE classes, and let's say you handle two classes of MAPE each year, so you have two ECR for each component. With this template, you'll only need to click this button and you'll have as many MAPE classes in your sheet. Also, if you wish to help your co-teachers who are advisors, you can just send them this grading sheet and tell them to copy the quarterly grades and paste it to the advisor ECR we made so they don't have to retype everything of your data. With that, they can easily generate their school forms and summary sheets too. I really hope you found our new template extremely useful and please support our channel by sharing this video to other teachers so that they will be able to benefit from our free templates. And don't forget to click the like button once if you like it and twice if you don't. If you have any more questions and clarifications, just pose it down below. This is Sorwes of iSchoolForms and thank you for watching.